A very good evening and thank you so much for joining us tonight on BTV Major News at 6. Reaching you live from Benin City, the Edo State Capital, Nigeria. My name is Oluatoy Oyedola. Before we get into the news, let's quickly take a look at the highlights for tonight. I therefore appeal to the state governors to give the information in the annual flood outlook dilatation it requires and to act swiftly to contain effects of any flooding incidents so as to forestall any counting. And this university remains not only a pioneer in Nigeria, but also a shining example across the entirety of the sub-Saharan Africa. We're not doing enough. We're all blaming other people for the issues and the problems. Let's start with ourselves. What am I not doing as well as I can? So I have no doubt at all in my mind that in the next 60 days we should be close to commissioning the place or less. So uh, it's a good one uh, and it's very notable, like I said. We will be supported by suitable majors to enhance the status of our officers and personnel while giving their service. PDP caucus and the House of Representatives remain united, indivisible, committed and out to perform her duty as the watchdog on behalf of the Nigerian people. Now to the news in detail. The federal government has installed Omonoba Nedu Ukwa Polo Polo Obaiwaya II Oba of Benin as the Chancellor of the National Open University now, with the mandate to improve on the fortune of the university towards achieving the core mandates of the 42-year-old institution. The TV News Best Orator reports that President Bola Tinubu, represented by the Minister of State for Education, Dr. Tanko Sununu, decorated Obaiwai II at the 18th, 13th rather, convocation and the investiture ceremony at the University in Abuja. <laughs> It was a glint of glamour at the investiture as the Oba of Benin, His Royal Majesty Oba Ewai II, was conferred with Honorary Consul of Doctor in Public Administration at the National Open University of Nigeria. His Royal Majesty has over the years been quietly tracing the descendants of the great Benin Empire. In his acceptance speech, Obayawai II, after subscribing to the university oath led by the president, formally constituted the convocation for the award of first degrees, postgraduate degrees, and other categories of award and certificates. The chancellor also called on the federal government to consider a robust funding for the university and employed the government to be conscious of establishing universities with dual roles towards ensuring the standard are upheld. President Bola A. Tinubu, President and Commander in Chief of the Armed Forces, Federal Republic of Nigeria, for giving me worthy of this significant responsibility. The trust in me is both a privilege and a challenge that I undertake with utmost dedication. We will do our best to ensure that this university remains not only a pioneer in Nigeria, but also a shining example across the entirety of the sub-Saharan Africa. Obaiwai II, who promised to carry out his responsibility diligently, also appealed to the government to also include the National Open University of Nigerian graduates into the National Youth Service Corps NYSE scheme by amending the act that established the university. The Benin Monarch equally advised the graduate students to be exemplary as the NOUN alumni and explore entrepreneurship. His Majesty hailed the university management for its commitment to service as inspiration to the university, where a total of 22,175 graduates who backed various degrees and merit awards. Addressing the convocation, President Bolatinibu, represented by the Minister of Health, sued for cutting-edge multidisciplinary research 
that will benefit Nigerian citizens and Nigeria. He assured that the federal government will continue to promote distant learning, which he said has been widened by the government to accommodate private sector involvement in order to create access, promote quality and affordability in the mode of tertiary education. I extend my heartfelt congratulations to His Royal, Royal Majesty, Omonoba Edo Uku Akolo Kolo, Iwari II, the Oba of Benin, on his investiture as the Chancellor of the National Open University of Nigeria. May the Almighty God grant his prayer partner sound health and successful tenure as he diligently performs his duty. This administration will continue to promote the open and distance approach as one of the strategies to improving access to education. In his address, the Vice Chancellor of the National Open University of Nigeria, Professor Ulufemi Peters, said the convocation marked a milestone for graduates at the event, which he said heralds a new era for those who seek knowledge regardless of their academic background. He also stated that the university under its leadership has made it a policy to acquire and also use vehicles from Innocent Vehicles Manufacturing Company in a bid to promote local content. The installation of a new chancellor is a ceremony of dignity with many academic traditions and protocols. Today, this investiture affords us the opportunity to confer the authority and symbol of office of a new chancellor. The honorary award recipient are the founder Innocent Vehicles Manufacturing Company Limited, Chief Dr. Innocent Chikuma, recipient of honorary doctorate degrees in business administration, who was represented by Mr. Jonas Chuku, a director in the company. Have that to amend Abdul Rahid, who backed honorary doctorate degree in letters at the convocation. Best orator reporting for BTV News. The Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer of Uworon Investment Company Limited, Mr. Izodua Mowye Imaswe, has congratulated His Royal Majesty Omanoba Nedu Ukwa Polo Polo LYA the second CFR Oba Benin on his recent installation as the Chancellor of the National Open University. By the Federal Government of Nigeria at the 13th Convocation slash Investiture Ceremony of the University on Saturday, April 13, 2024 in FCT Abuja. Izodua Mowye Imaswan said as loyal sons of the great Benin Kingdom, he is proud and wholly rejoices with the Royal Father as no one fits the role of Chancellor of the National Open University better than the monarch, saying that the federal government made the right choice. He prayed the Almighty God and the ancestors to give the Oba more wisdom to achieve his mandate of improving on the growth of the university towards achieving the core mandates of the institution. He prayed the Almighty God to continue to grant the Omonoba long life on his new role at the university. Now, part of the reforms of the federal government to ensure effective policing is the complete overall of institution and mindsets of officers into a modern-day internal security standard. Vice President Kashim Satima stated this at the maiden edition of the Nigerian Police Award and Commendation Ceremony in Abuja. The report. Dedication, courage, and selflessness. Complementing them with training and capacity building to equip officers and men of the police with expertise and part of the requirements needed to carry out the task of modern policing and the approval of the first week of April as Police Week and the last day of the week as National Police Day is another step towards ensuring effective policing. We are creating equipment and technology to enhance operational effectiveness and efficiency. This includes acquiring people purpose equipment, weapons, ammunition, and armor carriers to provide forward and protection for officers in combat situations. These endeavors will be supported by suitable measures to enhance the status of our officers and personnel while giving their service and actual care. President of the Senate, Godswill Akbabiu, and other speakers at the event commended the Inspector General of Police, Kayode Egbetokun, for recognizing the hard work, resilience, and patriotism of the officers and men of the police force, acknowledging that the decision to celebrate the nation's heroes will pave way for a new police force. The leader of the National Assembly, I pledge our full cooperation and support of the entire legislature in Nigeria to ensure better policing for the future. 
through oversight functions, through voluntary positions, and through other means. To the commencement of the current federal government, progress reforms, we have witnessed very significantly improvements in the security, safety, the good news by the government at this event is assurance to equip the police officers with the knowledge, skills, values and expertises required to tackle the complex challenges of modern policing and hence operational effectiveness and efficiency of the force. Oluwatoyin Oyedola reporting for BTV News. The national headquarters of the All Progressive Congress, APC, has reacted to the purported suspension of the chairman, Abdullahi Ganduje, by his word executive, saying he has filed a petition with the Inspector General of Police to bring the sponsors of the act to justice. The statement by the National Publicity Secretary of the APC, Felix Moka, said the perpetrators of this act are not card-carrying members of the APC, but individuals affiliated with senior officials and representatives of the new Nigeria People's Party, the NNPP. Moka said the act allegedly procured by the officials of the NNPP in Kanu was part of a despicable program of political persecution lost by the administration of Governor Abba Yusuf against Ganduji, a former governor of Kanu State. The deputy committee of the Ganduji Ward of APC in the Dawa Kintufa local government area of Kanu State has on Monday announced the suspension of Ganduji for lead corruption. The Kanu State Working Committee of the APC has swiftly upturned the suspension and came down heavily on those who announced Ganduji's suspension. The national leadership of the APC further came down heavily on those behind Ganduji's suspension, describing it as a dubious act of a group of impersonators out of course mischief and creates confusion in the otherwise peaceful Ganduji world. Meanwhile, a Kano State High Court has granted an ex parte order restraining the national chairman of the All Progressive Congress, Abdullahi Ganduje, from parading himself as a member of the party. Subsequently, the court ordered that henceforth Ganduje should desist from presiding over all affairs of the National Working Committee of the APC. The application granted by Justice Usman Nababa followed an ex parte motion filed by Dr. Ibrahim Saad on behalf of two executive members of Ganduje's ward, the Joaquin Tofa local government area, the Assistant Secretary Lamin Usani, and legal advisor Haladu Guanjo plaintiffs, who were part of the nine ward executives who suspended Ganduje on Monday. The court directed the four parties joined in the matter, including the APC, NWC, APC, Kanu State Working Committee, and Ganduje to henceforth maintain the status quo as of April 15, 2024, pending the hearing and determination of the substantive suit on April 30, 2024. Justice Nababa also held as prayed, stopped state, state Working Committee APC Kanu from interfering with the legally and validly considered decision of executives of Ganduji Board, essentially on action endorsed by a two-third majority of the executives as provided by the Constitution. In a bid to cushion the effects of the looming food crisis in the country, the member representing Oedo Federal Constituency at the Federal House of Assembly, Honorable Engineer Esosa Iyawe, has embarked on a food bank initiative which will enable his constituents to collect free food for free on a monthly ration of food palliatives. Some of the beneficiaries of the initiative shower their commendations on Honorable Iyawe for the palliative. BTV News Group was at the venue of the food bank registration at his federal constituency house. BTV News Best Orator has details of this report. There is no doubt that the need for urgent intervention in food security and impending farming across the country is an issue that needs to be addressed. Therefore, 
as a preemptive measure to mitigate the looming food crisis in the country, especially among the people of Oedo Federal constituency. The member representing Oedo Federal constituency at the Federal House of Representatives, Honorable Engineer Sosa Yawe, have officially commenced a food bank initiative for the people. Speaking to newsmen on behalf of Honorable Iyawe, Comrade Innocent Awolo, personal assistant to the federal lawmaker and coordinator of the Food Bank Initiative, said that the palliative gesture by the Honorable Member is a way of cushioning the current hardship in the country and that Honorable Iyawe is fulfilling his promise to the people in his constituency and that many more initiatives will follow. Also, the coordinator added that the Food Bank Palliative will benefit people from Oedo Federal constituency no matter the political parties they belong as it will enable them to collect for free a monthly ratio of food palliatives after registration for and giving a Food Bank Access Card. Honorable Virginia Esosa Iyawe, member representing Oedo Federal constituency, is here to answer his people, is here to give back to his people because he's a man that keeps promises. Because when he was campaigning, those are the part of the things he have assured the people of quality representation. Knowing fully well of the hardship that we are fixing currently in Nigeria, he did me feel that even if it's a little to organize what we call food bank whereby every member of Oredo come across every political party none this is this is not a, a labor party affair you come across all political party even though you are a voter or you are not a voter as far as you are you know residing in Oredo you are part of this exercise just to reduce the hunger at least within a short time in that very family. The car that we are giving them is valid throughout this year and they are going to be coming once in every month. In an interview with BTV News Crew, the Labour Party youth leader in Oedo Ward 1, Comrade Odion, some party leaders and other beneficiaries were static and lauded the Food Bank Initiative, the monthly palliative from Honorable Engineer Sosa Yawe, and hope that other privileged individuals in public office we emulate him for a better Nigeria. I want to commend the, the initiative of our Honorable and our Sosa Yahweh for this great initiative that we have brought to the people of Oredo, the good people of Oredo, that we still have good leaders. We still have people that we see enter uh, 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 leadership and that we still perform well. This is a plus. This is just the beginning, according to what he has told us. He said this is just the beginning. A more, more as they come. Just imagine somebody who collect palliative not in December. It's not, it's not, it's not a child's play. I feel very great. I was even surprised when I saw the message on the platform. As usual, I thought maybe it was a joke until I came today to see the reality of things. So if other person can imitate him, I think the federal government. I do say it will be better. Uh, General Sosa Yahweh, you do well. God will bless you for the food you will give us. We want to thank Engineer Yahweh for what he did. He's a very good one. We appreciate him. We will devote a We say thank you to him. Commercial time for the free food will take place every last Thursday of the month from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. from the month of April to December 2024. Best Orator reporting for BTV News. The PDP gubernatorial aspirant, candidate rather, Dr. Aswe Igodalo, is said to be a firm believer in his strength, capacity, value, and impact of youth and youth development. He shared words of hope and inspiration with the youth of Ego local government during the youth summit, which was held at the Victor Uwaifo Creative Hub in Benin City. BTV News Best Orator reports that the summit featured discussions and interactive sessions where the youths were encouraged and inspired to take ownership until towards the next level leadership. The report. 
It was indeed a great day at the Ego Youth Summit because it was about inspiring and challenging youth to take ownership. The summit commenced with the opening remarks and discussion by the summit convener, Honorable Ogbede Ifalu Yisibo, the Honorable Commissioner for Digital Economy, Science and Technology in Edo State with the youth in attendance. Next, the PDP governorship candidate, Dr. Aswa Igudalu, took the floor and charged the youth. He said the youth should start asking themselves what they are doing and whether they are doing it well rather than blaming others. The local government will start the transformation of Nigeria through Edo State. We're not doing enough. We're all blaming other people for the issues and the problems. Let's start with ourselves. What am I not doing as well as I can do? The Youth Summit also featured a question and answer session that prepared deep thoughts, inspiring creative thinking for the next level of the youth of Edo State. Also, some invited speakers, through their remarks at the event, continue to inspire, motivate, engage, and challenge the youth to the next level of leadership, confidence, and opportunities. In an interview at the end of the summit, the convener of Ego Youth Summit and Commissioner for Digital Economy, Science, and Technology, Honorable Obede Ifalu Isibo, stated that the Ego Youth Summit it was a time to retool and rework the minds of young people to spur them up for leadership and that is why someone in the person of Dr. Aswen Godalu was brought on stage to inspire the young people and that they were energized. He added that Barrister Aswen Godalu, based on his experience, has the capacity to lead the state. We just had the very first Ega Youth Summit in the Victor Rifle Creative Hub and we thought it was a time an opportunity to re-engineer, retool, rework the minds of young people to spur them up for leadership. And we thought that we would need someone who has attained about the highest level of leadership in the corporate Nigeria to come engage with young people to inspire them because leadership is the capacity to inspire people. And that inspiration is motivated by passion. And that passion is driven by purpose. And so we thought that having Dr. Asmari Gudalo come around to come fellowship with us and engage our minds was very vital because he has led multi-billion dollar companies and now he's one of those that is aspiring to lead five million other people because he has the capacity and he has the competence to effect changes like he has done everywhere else we think he can domesticate it now in Edo State. And it was an honor and privilege to have him come around. And the young folks that were here gathered, they couldn't have enough of him. He inspired confidence in us. You know, he helped us to build, you know, that fire that has been lacking in the African youth, in the minds of the people. And we're so grateful. We're thankful that he came around and we are energized and we know that the future is ours. In the summit was a wake-up call for Edo youths to think, create, innovate, and confidently take ownership of their future. Best Orator reporting for BTV News. The Nigerian Army is reviewing its operations, injecting new platforms, and upscaling its effort to further secure the nation. These and other issues were the thrust of the first quarter Chief of Army Staff Conference in Abuja. BTV News gift Ua Boy has the details. These are heads of units, formations, and commanders at the first quarter's Chief of Army Staff Conference 2024 in Abuja. The periodic assembly is an avenue to review Army operations, training activities, and relevant key issues in the first quarter of the year and make enhanced projections to further secure the nation. It is pertinent to accentuate the Nigerian Army's commitment to remain a viable diplomatic tool for the government through consistent and effective contributions to national, regional, and global security. Our efforts have remained focused towards ensuring the accomplishment of the Chief of Army Staff's command philosophy, which ultimately center on adequate training, well-equipped and highly motivated troops. The Nigeria Army stressed that it is committed to ensuring professionalism, human rights, and the protection of the nation's territorial integrity. Gifts Uwagbo reporting for BTV News. In the meantime, officers and men of the Nigerian police force must keep to their ethical conduct 
of Integrity and Excellence. Minister of Police Office Affairs, rather, Ibrahim Gadam gave the charge at the maiden awards and commendations by the Nigerian Police Force. BTV News, Victor Uluashegun tells us more. Dedication, courage, and selflessness. Complementing them with training and capacity building to equip officers and men of the police with expertise and part of the requirements needed to carry out the task of modern policing and the approval of the first week of April as Police Week and the last day of the week as National Police Day is another step towards ensuring effective policing. We are really equipping and technology to enhance operational effectiveness and efficiency. This includes acquiring good for purpose equipment, weapons, ammunition, and armor carriers to provide forward and protection for officers in combat situations. These endeavors will be supported by suitable measures to enhance the status of our officers and personnel while doing their service and after retiring. President of the Senate, Godswill Akbabiu, and other speakers at the event commended the Inspector General of Police, Kayode Egbetokun, for recognizing the hard work, resilience, and patriotism of the officers and men of the police force, acknowledging that the decision to celebrate the nation's heroes will pave way for a new police force. The leader of the National Assembly, I pledge our full cooperation and support of the entire legislature of Nigeria. To ensure that we can do our duty. Oversight functions, two voluntary positions, and two other means. Of the past. So, the commencement of the current federal government for reforms, we have witnessed very significant improvements in the security, safety of lives and property. The good news by the government at this event is assurance to equip the police officers with the knowledge, skills, values and expertises required to tackle the complex challenges of modern policing and hence operational effectiveness and efficiency of the force. Oluwatoi Oyedola reporting for BTV News. The meeting of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, caucus in the House of Representatives ended in a commotion with the lawmakers sharply divided along the lines of those in support of the party's acting national chairman, Umar Damagun, and those against his continued stay in office. BTV News' Esoye Osemigi reports. After settling down, the PDP federal lawmakers in the House of Representatives started deliberating on critical issues affecting the party. The feat of the PDP acting chairman, Umar Demangum, is a top issue for discussion ahead of the National Executive Council meeting of the party on Thursday. But before the lawmakers began deliberations, journalists were asked to leave the meeting after the opening session. Though, though it was a closed-door meeting, arguments can be heard from inside and visuals through the window showed it was a tense meeting. After more than three hours of deliberations, the lawmakers emerged with this communique. The PDP caucus and the House of Representatives remain united, indivisible, committed and out to perform her duty as the watchdog on behalf of the Nigerian people. The House of Representatives caucus also agreed to call on all party caucuses, the Board of Trustees, National Executive Committee, and the National Working Committee of the party to embark on reconciliatory measures with a view to resolve all litigations that are pending and that has hindered the party in any way whatsoever from having a substantive national chairman. We call on our leaders, leaders of the People's Democratic Party, to continue to demonstrate unconditional loyalty to the party and ensure that the party is moved to her pride of place where she enjoyed the position of the largest party in Africa and to take back the Asso Villa, which is actually supposed to be our bet right. The lawmakers also want the federal government to address the lingering security challenges in the country. We x-rayed the security situation in our country and we resolved 
that we can no longer take this situation where Nigeria is today almost tagged as one life, one minute silence. The government is therefore called upon to immediately take steps to ensure that the security situation in the country is normalized. And the caucus has also given three months ultimatum for government to normalize the security situation in our country. After three months, the caucus will take further steps to sensitize and mobilize Nigerians to perhaps take their security into their hands. Though the PDP lawmakers here have spoken in one voice, party members are hoping that the voice will not become multiple voices when the Party National Executive Council meeting meets on Thursday. Asara Osemege reporting for BTV News. The federal government has written at least 31 states' governors, informing them of the impending flooding in their states between April and November this year. The Minister of Water Resources and Sanitation, Professor Joseph Utsev, stated this on Tuesday in Abuja while briefing journalists on the 2024 annual flood outlook for the country. BTV News' Tosin Tuluanoju has more. River channels relocate residents and collect drainages to prevent flooding. Commenting on the general highlights of the 2024 annual flood outlook, the Water Resources Minister said some areas in the 31 states were categorized as high flood risk locations, while others in the 36 states and the Federal Capital Territory would witness moderate flood. The minister further noted that flash and urban floods would be experienced in urban city centers across the country. Among these are Bakaleke, Abekota, Abuja, Asaba, Benin City, Benekebi, Kalaba, Ibadan, Kaduna, Kanu, Lagos, Makodi, Ngoro, Onicha. Shogbo, Port Harcourt, Sokoto, Wari, and Yola. I therefore appeal to the state governors to give the information in the annual flood outlook that attention it requires and to act swiftly to contain effects of any flooding incidents so as to forestall any chaotic. He added that Bayesa, Cross River, Delta, Lagos, Ogun Rivers, and Undo would experience cost of flood due to the rise in sea level and tidal surge, adding that this would impact fishing, wildlife habitation, and river navigation. Tosin to Luwaloju, reporting for BTV News. Bayelsa Governor Duo Yediri has visited Igbomoturu community in southern Ijo local government area after alleged military invasion of the community in search of suspected killers of 17 military personnel in Okwama Delta State. BTV News Rebecca Guffey completes the report. <laughs> This amateur video shows some residents of Igbamotaru who have taken refuge in the forest as the army continues to search for the alleged mastermind of the Okwama killings. The military has cooperated and they have told me that you can go about your normal business. They will not hurt innocent people. And I'm sure from when that incident happened until today, at least we are beginning to have better freedom in Igbomotaru. We will continue to engage the federal government and the military high command so that this issue will be brought to a permanent rest. But those who killed must be brought to book. The military high command assured me that what happened in Oti will not happen in Igbomotaru, that they are not going to raise down the Igbomotaru community. The era of militancy is over. And this is the era of intellectual engagement. And this is what your government is set to do. The cry of the people over the hardship caused by the siege on their community echoes in the Bayesa State Government House, prompting Governor Doye Diri to visit the area. The Chief Security Officer of the state first arrived in Igbamotaru 1, where he assured the people of the military in their community. For our departed soldiers and youths continue to rest in the bottom of the mall. Amen. 
Despite the rain, they find the rain that governor crossed over to Igbamotaru to that paternal hometown of Endurance Amagbai, one of the men declared wanted by the military. I am reliably informed that over 20 youths have been killed. Of course, the other information I had before coming today about some houses being destroyed is not correct. Because I have come here, I have seen in both Ibomotoro 1 and Ibomotoro 2, I have seen that uh, all the houses are there intact. Uh, the information I have is that just one house where uh, it was alleged that the person they are looking for uh, was occupying. But my advice to the military and security agencies is to be very professional in their investigations so that innocent by essence, innocent ejors, their lives will not be lost. I am against the killings and I am also against any reprisal attack of innocent people of my state. Sympathizing with the army over the Okwama tragedy, the Bayesa state governor restate the cause for professionalism to avert collateral damage to the communities. Despite the suiting west of Governor Doye Diri, the faces of the residents of Igbomotoro paint a picture of gloom and uncertainty over the continued military presence in the area, with the army's targets, Endurance Amagbai, still very much at large. Rebecca Goffey reporting for BTV News. Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, Olaya Mikadoso, says the APES Bank has deployed robust digital technologies to drive most of its process for optimal performances. Kadoso, who was represented by Deputy Governor Bala Bello, disclosed this during the study tour of the Senior Executive Course of Nigeria Institute of Policy and Strategic Studies to his headquarters on digital economy and youth empowerment and sustainable job creation in Nigeria's issues, challenges, and opportunities. BTV News, Asoye Osenige has more. Saving the set 46 of the National Institute for Policy and Strategic Studies, the Central Bank Governor, represented by the Deputy Governor of Corporate Services, Bala Bello, says the evolving digital landscape presents both opportunities and challenges, which the study tour will help in navigating for the benefit of Nigerians. As a forward thinking organization, the Central Bank is committed to harnessing the power of digital technologies to enhance financial inclusion boost productivity and create an enabling environment for innovation and entrepreneurship to strive. During the technical session that you're going to have with our team, the CBM staff will provide very valuable insights into the bank's initiative and strategies aimed at fostering a robust digital ecosystem in the country. The more of our activities we can put in digital format, the more we get the opportunity of providing access to a whole lot of the 120 million active Nigerians. We know we are challenged by literacy issues. We know that a whole lot of children are out of school. We are asking ourselves what can the digital systems do. The digital economy, according to the Director General of NIPSS, Professor Ayo Omotayo, requires Nigerians to position itself ready to a nest for the development of the nation's GDP. Telling us to be ready for that time when all your medications would be bought on your phone. Will Nigeria be ready at that time? The CBN Deputy Governor Bala Mohamed is of the opinion that the study tour presents an opportunity for both the CBN and the NIPSS to address the multifaceted benefits and challenges of digital economy as it will serve as a catalyst for the overall prosperity of the nation. SR Osemege reporting for BTV News. You're still on to BTV Major News on the hour. We have more stories coming your way after the short break. Original no be my mind. Authentic no be my mind. Original no be fair. Quality plenty. EDS. For quality plenty. Na EDS. For quality plenty. Na EDS. For emotion. Super satin. Super mato. Gravity spent today, test job spent today, and the high quality emotion now for EDS. Aye. You know, go for the for EDS. Aye. 
Yes. EDS Quality Paints, Kilometer 12, Bidin Supply Road, by Ogege Quarters, Bidin City, or our branch office, 68 Supply Road, opposite former Edo State Library, now ShopRite. Contact us today on 90 EDS Quality Paints, giving your goals live. Yes. Glad to know you're still with us. Now to business. Nigeria's foreign reserves shed $1.8 billion in the last month, moving downward from $34.45 billion to $32.61 billion. Data obtained from the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, did not state the factors responsible for the slide, which is the lowest in six years. For more on business news, let's join BTV News' Regina Ujomo. This come as the national currency changed below the 1,000 error mark for the dollar at the parallel market on Tuesday. It is believed the CBN intervention in the value of the Naira as well as debit servicing may be responsible for the situation. The last time the foreign reverse went on that day, 3 billion US dollar was in 2017, lowering to 32.49 billion US dollar. However, the acting director of the corporate communication of the CBN, Saeed Ali Hakima, attributed the rise in the value of the Naira to the policy of the Yemi Kadusso led management. She pointed to the increased interest of the foreign investors in government debit security and the also in diaspora remaintenance. Experts are insisting that Naira appreciates is a trade off, citing fraud that are needed for the stability of the currency. Nigeria's crude oil reverse have increased by 1 billion barrel. One natural gas reverse has jumped by 22.573 trillion cubic feet. The Nigeria Upstream Petroleum Regulatory Commission has announced as of January 1st, 2024, Nigeria's combined proven reverse of oil, crude oil, and condescent stood at 37.5 billion barrel, while the reverse of associated natural gas, natural gas, and non associated gas stood at 209.26 trillion cubic Cubic feet. NUPRC Chief Executive Benga Komolafe said of the oil and condensate reverse, crude oil reverse where there's 1.56 billion barrel and condensate 5.94 billion barrel. NUPRC said in a statement on Tuesday, Nigeria tops risk second in Africa in terms of crude oil reverse behind Libya. In terms of natural gas reverse, Nigeria risk first in Africa and knows a large portion of Africans' estimated reverse, more than 33 percent of these. Nigeria has 68 years of crude reverse and 97.99 years of natural gas reverse, according to NUPRC Omalafe. Chevron Corp's venture ham has launched a fund with a 500 US dollar million commitment to invest in renewable energy technology. The future energy fund will enable Chevron to see beyond corners, evaluate long horizontal beds not currently connected to their business. The company said citing Fusion's direct air capture and batteries as are examples. The fund will build on the renewable tech investment of two preceding funds. Chevron Technology Ventures said in a statement adding that there is no set timeline for development or the selection of firms that will benefit. The first future energy fund launched in 2018 and was followed up by a second in 2021 for a total of 400 million US dollars commitment, not all of which has been invested as of this day, the company said. And that's it on business news tonight. Regina Ujama reporting for BTV News. On to entertainment, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, has filed a case, a three-count charge against Kubana Chief Priest, a popular Instagram celebrity who has been accused of abusing the Naira, Nigerian's currency. Kubana Chief Priest arrived at the court around 8.45 a.m. on Wednesday, April 17th. BTV News Gift to Boy has details of this and more from the world of entertainment. Celebrity barman Pascal Okechuku, a.k.a. Kubana Chief Priest, was arraigned before Justice Kainde Ogundare of the Federal High Court in Lagos on three counts bordering on abuse of Naira by allegedly spraying and tapping with the nation's currency at a social event, contrary to the provisions of the Central Bank Act of 2007. It was driven to the court's premises by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, operatives under heavily armed police escorts. It was alleged to have sprayed 
Parade the Naira on February 13, 2024 at Eco Hotel. Kubana Chief Priest was said to have also committed the offenses while dancing during a social event. He was said to have tampered with the funds in the denomination of 500 Naira notes issued by the CBN by spraying the same for two hours. Mortijora Fusing Nigerian Street pop star Shei Vibes has kicked off 2024 on a blistering note with his EP Naham Siaga emerging as the most streamed project in Nigeria for the first quarter. The EP released as Shei Vibes' fourth project of 2023 has garnered a whooping 92.5 million streams across all four major platforms Apple Music, Audio Mac, Spotify and YouTube to make it the most streamed project in Nigeria of 2024 so far. Bored by the hit single Different Pattern which is the fifth most streamed song of the first quarter and Kana which ranks seventh on the list the Naham Siaga EP continues Shay Vibes electrifying mainstream run. Charlie Poppy's debut album Presido La Pluto is number two on the list with 80.2 million streams while Odumodu Black's mixtape Ezioku is number three on the list with 66 million streams. Nigerian rap sensation Jeremiah Tukwebuka and a professionally known as Jerry has honored ace rapper Fino by inking a big tattoo of his name on his arm. The true life story crooner who sees Fino as a role model showed off the new ink which was drawn in a vertical manner on his right hand by an artist. In a video posted online, Jerick and his crew were playing Fino's song in the background while green from cheek to cheek cause he now has his mentor's name as part of him. Social media users shared divergent views while reacting to the Southeast based hip hop artist decision to get tattoo of another rapper name on his body and that's it on entertainment news tonight gifts wagbo reporting for btv news and on sports borussia dortmund reached their first champions league semi-final in 11 years by producing a superb second half comeback to beat atletico madrid 5-4 on aggregates let's join uyu lambert for details and more sports stories Having lost the first leg 2-1 in Madrid, Dortmund quickly turned things around with Julian, with Julian Brandt and Chelsea Loney and Matsin both scoring from tight angles in the first half. But Atletico Madrid made it 2-1 on the night and 3-3 on aggregate when Mario Heramoso header deflected in off Dortmund defender Matt Hummers shortly after the restart. And Gare Correa, Angel Correa then gave Atletico Madrid a 4-3 aggregate lead when he smashed in a rebounded finish from close range in the 64th minute. But Dortmund leveled once again a thrilling second half as Niklas Fokrum finished off Marcel Sabitza's cross with a loopy header after 71 minutes. And less than three minutes later, Sabitza struck Dortmund's winner with a drill finish into the bottom corner to round off a sublime quarterfinal tie and set up a semi-final against Paris Saint-Germain. Andy Murray has been named on the entry list for the French Open, but fellow Briton Emma Raducalu is not yet assured of a place in the draw. Three-time Grand Slam champion Murray, 36, rushed ankle ligaments at the Miami Open last month. Raducalu missed the, the last eight months of 2023 but has a protective ranking of 103 and is the fifth alternate. If she does not make the main draw because of withdrawals, she will need a wild card or to come through qualifying. The French Open starts on 26 May. Murray has played at Roland Garros only once since he resurfacing surgery in 2019, losing in the first round in, in 2020. The Scout, who won Olympic gold at London in 2012 and Rio 2016, said this year that he wants to compete at another Games before he retires. Rafael Nadal, the 14-time French Open champion, is one, is one of five players entered in the main draw to benefit from a protected ranking. Now to the NBA. LeBron James caught 23 points at Los Angeles Lakers beat the New Orleans Pelicans 110 to 106 to reach the NBA playoffs. James, 39, also shipped in with, with 9 rebounds, 9 assists and 3 steals to help the Lakers seal the 7th seed in the Western Conference. The Lakers face defending champions in Denver Nuggets in the first round of playoffs. We've got a good group going right now, James said. James is set to feature in the playoffs for the 17th time in his 21 season career. Meanwhile, the Sacramento Kings ended Golden State Warriors hopes of appearing in the playoffs with a 118 to 94 win in the, in the playing tournament. Stephen Curry top score for the Warriors with 22 points, but Clay Thompson, who has averaged 17.9 points a game this season, failed to score in 32 minutes. The Warriors have now missed out on the playoff three times in the past five seasons. Keegan Murray hit eight three-pointers and ended the match with 32 points and nine rebounds for the Kings, while the Aaron Fox added 24 points. And that is on the Sports News segment tonight. I'm Will Lambert. Thanks for watching. With that, 
time we've come to the end of our news package for tonight. It's always a pleasure to have you with us. My name is Ulua Tui Oyedola. Have a good night's rest.